Hello everyone, my name is Caitlin. Welcome back to my channel. So I am super excited about today's video because we are finally getting a chance to talk about Descendants 3. So I figured I would do a non-spoiler section first and then I'll jump right into a full spoiler section. We'll talk about all my thoughts and feelings. And so with all that being said, let's just jump right into it. So generally speaking, I did really enjoy the movie. It's probably my least favorite of the three movies, but I did still enjoy it and I do think it is a really good decom. The premise is there's this new villain who's wreaking havoc on Oradon and it's someone who you wouldn't expect it to be unless you've seen any of the merch leading up to this movie or any of the promos really because they've totally given it away as well. But anyways, Mal and her gang along with some new members have to try to defeat this villain before they like take over Oradon. And we do learn a lot more about Mal and her past in this movie as well as her relationship with Ben takes a step forward. This movie does do a really great job of wrapping the series up really nicely and so I would say if you're a fan of the Descendants franchise or just DCOMs in general to give it a watch because it is really enjoyable and the music's great. So with all that being said I am going to move on to the spoiler section and when I mean spoiler section I'm really going to jump right into probably the biggest spoiler in this movie so if you have not seen this movie I highly recommend that you click away and then come back after you've seen it and we can talk all about it. So the barrier's down. Yeah, that thing that every antagonist in the past two movies have been trying to take down, but all the good guys decided that that would be a bad idea because the world's highest profile criminals all live there. Yeah, that's just down because who cares? I cannot be the only person that is freaking out about this. That's like if our government was like, you know what? The people in jail, they're just as likely to commit a crime as the people outside of jail. So let's just get rid of jail and not like figure out a different system to maybe rehabilitate people back into the public more. No, let's just let them all loose because that's a great idea. Like this makes no sense. It's also like, I don't understand why we didn't just take the kids and bring them over. Like these adults are in there for a reason. They committed some serious crimes and now they're just gonna let them loose into their society. Like honestly, Mal and Ben are just way too young to be making these decisions. When Beast was like, no, this is a bad idea. I was like, yes, Beast is the only voice of reason in this. Like, this is a serious thing. There's some serious Disney villains on there. At least that's what we're supposed to assume. People like Frollo from The Hunchback who like, abused Quasimodo his whole life and then tried to burn Esmeralda at the stake because she wouldn't sleep with him or Scar from The Lion King who murdered his brother and then tried to murder his nephew too. Like he's just gonna be loose out in the public. You don't think they deserve to be punished for those crimes? I don't understand. Like imagine the horror that is gonna be inflicted upon Oradon. It's not gonna be safe. There's a whole bunch of criminals running around. People that killed people are just gonna be running around Oradon. Like this is not a good idea. I just don't understand why they thought that this was the right solution. Like I understand that another one would have been hard to figure out and that this is just a decom, but I'm like, if you're gonna set up the premise of the past two movies with this place is very evil, there's a lot of evil people here and it would be very bad if they got loose. And then in the third movie, try to make it seem like it's not as bad as you made us believe it was in the past two movies and be like, it's okay for everyone to just be let loose. Like that doesn't really make any sense and it really makes for a continuity error. Also after the events of this movie, Ordon really needs to come up with a better judicial system because if they're just gonna let everybody free, like I feel like it's basically the purge now. Sort of. I don't know. They need some sort of judicial system or else Ordon is like going downhill. But I'm not going to spend this whole video ranting about the barrier, so let's move on to something I did like and that would be the storyline. I like to imagine that Kenny this time around was just like, you know what, it's the last one, go big or go home, and let's just make it as crazy and weird as possible. I do think it was really well done. I liked it better the second time around. It was very fast paced and really kept you on the edge of your seat the whole time. I do wish we got to see more of Mal and Ben in this film, and I have been hoping for a Mal and Ben duet since the very first movie, and so I was disappointed that we didn't get one here. And part of me does kind of feel like their engagement came out of left field. It happened very early on in the movie, and we didn't really get any sort of explanation to it. I feel like they they are a bit young too and nobody comments on that. We're all just okay with it because it's true love I guess or because Dove Cameron said it was okay. And I was very surprised to see Mal accept it so like wholeheartedly. Like I felt like she would have some sort of conflict more about like the responsibilities of being queen. But then again we really don't know how much time has passed since the second movie. So maybe she has put more thought into that and is able to accept this new role. I don't know. I just feel like the Mal we know from the past two films would have a lot harder time accepting like being queen of this place that she doesn't really know that well. But the reprise of Did I Mention was beautiful and the way that the lines lined up perfectly just made me melt and her ring was just the perfect ring and then they kissed afterwards and it was beautiful and they are one of my favorite ships so it was nice to see them kind of take the next step just like as a fan. 
First of all, her motivation I thought was really well done. Throughout the beginning when she was like explaining why she was mad and stuff, I was like, yeah, girl, I get it. I feel like she was really justified in why she was upset and I thought that that development there was really interesting. The only thing is that I feel like having her as the main villain kind of hindered the film in a way. Like I went in personally with the expectation that it was gonna be Hades or Uma or both of them and then that Audrey was kind of gonna be a villain on the side, but then having her be the main villain kind of made me feel like the stakes weren't as high because throughout the movie, all I felt like she was doing was like running around and casting spells and kind of being like an emotional teen. I just feel like in the past two movies where the main villain's goal was having the barrier removed, it really added that sense of urgency because we are supposed to be scared of the people on the island, but then in comparison to just Audrey running around casting spells, really didn't feel as big of a threat in comparison. But on the bright side, I do think Audrey had a great evil laugh and there was that one scene where she spells Ben and says, sleeping is too good for you. That really makes it seem like she killed him, even though we all knew she wasn't gonna kill him, but they really made it seem that way and I thought that that was just really funny. There was one part though where Hades said something along the lines of like, you're only saving her because she's one of you guys. And I understand that they use that so that they could use like the whole message for the end of the film. But just as an outsider's perspective, that just didn't seem like the right reason to be saving her. Like for me, I saw it as they're saving her because she's a kid who made a mistake, not because she's from Oridon. It also bugged me that Audrey didn't see any sort of repercussions for her actions. Like she caused a lot of havoc onto Oridon and basically got away scot-free. Like they could have at least given her some community service hours or something because she caused a lot of like pain and suffering onto these people and we're all just okay with it. Like that made me so sad. Speaking of villains, I also really wanted to talk about Hades because he was one of my favorite characters in the film and I knew he was going to be going into it. Ever since we got that one promo of him, I was so excited to see him in action. But part of me does feel like if you aren't caught up with Descendants lore going into this movie, the whole Hades being Mal's dad thing would have come out of complete left field and I do kind of still feel like it does. Besides getting one of the best songs in the movie out of it, it did just kind of feel like an excuse for Hades to have motivation to do stuff for Mal. And I did also feel like their relationship was kind of rushed throughout the movie. I don't think we got enough development there. Basically at the beginning, she's like, he doesn't exist to me. And then by the end, she's like, I miss and care about him. Like, I just didn't understand what changed. Maybe it was him getting her the ember. I just feel like if we would have had more of a focus on their relationship in the movie, I think I would have liked the movie a lot more. I also really didn't understand his motivation at the beginning for breaking through the barrier and draining Mal's powers. Like he explains it as he doesn't belong there, which I totally understood. I was like, yeah, you're the God of the underworld. Why are you on this island? He should be ruling the underworld, get him out of there. I totally agreed with him. But then he wasn't trying to escape. He was just draining Mal's powers. And then she cries about it for a second, but then she seems fine throughout the rest of the movie. And then they kind of play it off as saying it was a good show that they both put on, which didn't make any sense to my opinion. And especially because Mal makes the decision to close the barrier because she thinks Hades is such a big threat. But then she later on confronts Hades and he doesn't seem like a threat anymore. So why is she still so bent on closing the barrier forever. It just made no sense. There's also a few moments in the movie where I felt like Mal and Hades got like too close to each other or like too intimate for like a father-daughter relationship. I don't know, maybe it was weird, maybe it was just me, but there was like a few moments between them that like left me uncomfortable for some reason. But I do think having Hades as Mal's dad just makes her character way cooler because now she's not just part dragon, she's also a demigod. So like she's basically the most powerful character in this franchise, maybe, I don't know. But let's move on to Uma because I did really like her story throughout the film as well. I thought that her development with Mal was really nice to see and just everybody working together in this film was just my favorite thing. I also love the other pirates too. Gil and Jay are basically canon now because I said so. And Harry was great to see too. I just look at him and I see Sean from the lodge and so seeing him again made me happy. I do wish he could have gotten more lines like in the songs because I think that Thomas has an amazing voice and I feel like we didn't really get to hear him sing that much which made me a little bit sad. But yeah, I really liked how all the relationships kind of came together and they all just made like a bigger group of friends. I thought that that message there was really nice. But speaking of the VKs, I definitely think that Evie was a highlight in this movie. She definitely became my favorite character after it and I feel like that's partly because of Sophia's acting. I just feel like she's an amazing actress and it's really showed in this film. I think one of the best scenes in this movie is when she's confronting Mal about lying and it's just partly because Sophia is such a good actress, it really made for a great moment in the movie. I just loved her character throughout the film. I love how she was trying to make everybody be friends, which speaking of, how on earth did they get back to Oridon in that one scene where their bikes got crashed? Was it the gum? How did they get back? I don't understand. Did Mal just go dragon and bring everybody back? If that's the case, why didn't she just do that in the first place? If it was some magical spell that they used to get back to Oridon, why didn't they just use that to get to the Isle in the first place? I don't understand what's the point of the bikes, what's the point of the limo, what's the point of anything? How did they get back to Oridon? I'm so confused. Also, who is Hannah? 
Who is she? Why does everybody freak out about Hannah when nobody knows who Hannah is? It made no sense. But I did also love Evie and Doug's relationship throughout the movie, obviously, but it did leave me with the question as if it's only romantic love that can break the curses in this universe because that's not the case with the Disney universe as we know from Frozen. And so why didn't Evie just kiss Dizzy and wake her up? Or why didn't Jane kiss her mom and wake her up? Like you love each other too. It's just not a romantic love, but I guess maybe in the Descendants universe, it is only romantic love, which in that case, that's dumb. Why? Also, I know that Lonnie wasn't in this movie because the actress was off filming something else, but even just like a nice little line about Lonnie is doing something somewhere just would have been nice. It was also just really nice to see Carlos in this movie. I felt like leading up to it, there was so much excitement for Descendants 3. And then once the news about Cameron broke, it kind of shifted the narrative and just made me and I feel like a lot of other people just really sad. And so just to see him happy and adorable in this movie was just, it was perfect. I do feel like his character was a little bit underutilized, but then just everything we got with him and Ben as the beast or him and Jane was just so adorable. And just to see him dance again, because he is in my opinion, the best dancer that has ever come from Disney Channel and so yeah it was really nice to see him being being Carlos and I have left the link for the Cameron Boys Foundation in the description which I think you should all go check out because I mentioned it in my last video as well but I do think it is a really great cause but yeah he was underutilized but it is hard when you have a cast that has grown so much since the past two movies and everything we did get with him and Jane was just everything I could have hoped for it was really adorable I felt like they did a great job with the soundtrack in this movie. I think my favorite one is probably Night Falls and Queen of Mean has really been growing on me the more I listen to it. Same with Once Upon a Time, which I really didn't like when I first heard it. I felt like it didn't really fit into the narrative of the movie really well. But then now that I've listened to it more, I feel like I really like the song as it is. I mentioned this earlier, but I feel like the song with Mal and her dad was one of the best ones in the film as well. It started off and it kind of gave me like the Lorax vibes, you know, that the evil guy from the Lorax, but I love the Lorax. So I love the song. I thought that it was really well done. And like I said, I really liked Evie and Doug's relationship throughout this film so obviously I loved One Kiss as well. I thought that that was just such a funny and cute song. And obviously Good To Be Bad and the finale song were great as well. There is that little bit about the barrier that bugs me and kind of makes me not like the finale as much but it is still a good song. Now I feel like I've been way too negative and critical throughout this review and I just love Descendants so much that I'm just gonna list off things that I loved in the movie. So Jane and Chad, when Chad is like bugging her saying that Carlos forgot her birthday was the funniest thing. Also Jane escaping the curse by like going in the Enchanted Lake was just so cool. She's always been one of my favorite characters and so to see her like that was just really cool and she was just adorable throughout this movie. I love her so much. Also the part where Celia and Mal went to Hades Lair and were on that really cool bike thing, that was just really cool. I love that. And Dr. Facilier's set on the aisle was probably one of my favorite sets that we've seen from the aisle and then there was also Evie's icebreakers that I loved and her just trying to make everybody be friends was just adorable. I also felt like the ending of the movie minus the whole barrier getting removed thing was really well done with them all running across the aisle. It was such a good moment and really made me emotional. I liked Ben with the beard. He was really hot with the beard. Also I already mentioned them but Jay and Gil were just so in love in this movie. It was really nice to see a nice gay canon couple in the Descendants franchise. I'm kidding, but they were cute and I really shipped them. Overall, I did really enjoy the movie. Even with all of its faults, it did make for a really enjoyable decom. And Descendants has always held such a special place in my heart because it was the one movie that got me back into loving Disney Channel. So I kind of feel like a chapter of my life has closed and I've just loved every minute of it. And I doubt any of them are watching right now, but I did just want to say a quick thank you to the cast and crew of these past three movies. Descendants has just been such a positive influence in my life. I love the stories. I love the characters. I love this world that you guys have created so much and I know that they will live on in the hearts of us fans for forever. I want to know what your favorite part of Descendants 3 was so don't forget to leave that in the comments down below. I can't wait to read all about it. Anyways guys my name is Caitlin. You can follow me everywhere at Kate Loves Disney. Don't forget to subscribe and turn that bell so you're notified every time I post a new video. But that's all I have to say for today. Hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you very very soon. Mm. Oh yeah I forgot it. I did that with the pillows. <laughs> ah, it's over. Oh, that is painful. I'm not wearing that. <laughs>